In this tutorial, I am going to talk about the render elements in V-Ray 3.2.x and I'm going to divide it into two parts. The first part is just going to go over all the V-Ray render elements and what they do. So if you don't want to go through the list and hear what they do, you can skip to part two where I actually use an example scene where I set some of these V-Ray elements up that are very useful. So let's get started with part one. So I'm gonna go through all of the V-Ray elements which are listed here on the left hand side here and using this scene that is just a temporary scene that I've set up for this um, for this example and it should hopefully illustrate what each render element does or at least most of them and I'm gonna try to go through it each one of these as quickly as I can. So let's get started. So here's the render as it looks like without, you know, not looking at the render elements or anything, just looking at the render. This is the alpha. So the very alpha just shows the alpha of, the, of your scene. So black parts are transparent or looking out into nothingness. Atmosphere shows what's in your environment dialog window only such as fog and fire and this is a fire example actually but size is too high so but it shows the, the element anyway so um, and then we have background which I just have some clouds in the background. The V-Ray bump normals shows the normals of your bump maps and non-bump surfaces. The caustics element shows the caustics only. So this is the beauty render and this is the caustics pass. The VRA diffuse filter shows your diffuse textures only without any lighting as if they were self-illuminated. The VRA DR bucket stands for distributed rendering bucket and shows which buckets are rendering on which machines when you're rendering a still on several machines. So this is an example image I found on the net showing that. V-Ray Extra Text allows you to replace all or some objects with another texture. In this case I used a falloff texture so the surface that are pointing to the camera are dark and the surfaces that are pointing away from the camera are white or brighter. The global illumination path shows only the global illumination lighting without any of the direct lights. The very illuminance element shows the illumination values in the scene. Vera lighting shows lighting only without the global illumination. Vera light select allow you to pick one or several light and this red render element will show it or them only. So the, in this scenario I've picked just one light and I've isolated it and it's it's actually a very handy render element. This is um, a matte shadow element and if you have matte objects in your scene this render element shows the shadows only. This uh, The material ID render element displays the material ID directly translated to color. For example, a material with a material ID of 7 will render out as overbright 7. So these tin cans, for an example, um, have a material ID of 5 and their color value shows up as 5. The material reflect glossiness pass gives you the reflect glossy value in gray values. It will only use the material's main gloss, glossy value, and not any maps modifying it, so that's important to keep in mind. The highlight glossiness shows the highlights, so it's basically the same thing in my scene. The material reflect um, index of reflect, uh, reflection shows my materials as represented as absolute values. So if one of my materials index of refraction is 1.7, the color will be white times 1.7. For example, the sphere has an index refraction of 1.6, so it shows up as 1.6 when I sample the color. The material refract glossiness 
uh, is the same as the reflect closeness, but for refraction materials. The material selects, this works only on V-Ray material, blend material, as far as I can tell, and allows you to pick a material in the blend materials list and only render that one out. But it only, like I said, it only seems to work in the V-Ray material, blend material. The V-Ray normals displays the normals of all the objects in your scene. The V-Ray object ID renders the object in your scene that has an object ID with the same value in color, same, same as uh, V-Ray and material ID. So for example, these tin cans have an object ID of 10 and it shows up as color value of 10 when I sample it. V-Ray object selects. I haven't been able to figure out what this one does and I haven't found any documentation on it. So I don't use it, obviously. So I'm not sure what it does. The V-Ray option RE, which then stands for render element, and uh, from the manual, it says this is a special render element that controls some internal settings. It does not generate any actual data. So I assume this is a placeholder for things to come. V-Ray Raw Global Illumination displays the global illumination without lighting and textures. So it just shows the raw global illumination. Raw lighting does the same, it shows only the lighting, not the global illumination, and not the textures, or reflections, or refractions. V-Ray Raw Reflection displays the reflection without textures. Raw Refraction displays the refraction without textures. So my sphere here that has refraction just shows, shows it with the pure refraction only. V-Ray Shadow displays the shadows from direct lights without textures. So I have gradients of shadows in this scene, but a good way of looking at it is under the sphere, you can see that it's basically like the inverse of my shadow. So I can see the inverse values of my shadows and what's happening in my shadows. The V-Ray Total Lighting displays all the lighting without textures. V-Ray Reflection displays the reflections in your scene. The V-Ray Reflection Filter can be considered as an alpha for the reflections. V-Ray Refraction displays the refractions in your scene. The V-Ray Refraction Filter um, is again, can be considered as an alpha for your refractions if you have a map. V-Ray Render ID, uh, from the manual it says, the node render ID of the object that contributes most to the pixel value. I'm not sure what this is useful for and I haven't used it myself in any projects or any personal projects or any production. V-Ray Sample Rate. The brighter the pixel in this image, the more samples were required to render that pixel. So this render element is great for optimizing your scene. You can see where all the brighter the pixel is where it's concentrating most of its samples. So you can see here it has to process a lot of the samples in these areas. V-Ray Sampler Info provides a variety of information about the pixels in your scene like position, normal, bump normal and more. And this can be used as a world position pass in comp. V-Ray Self Illumination shows the self illuminated parts of the image and I don't have any self-illuminated objects so it just shows up as black. V-Ray Shadows shows you the diffuse parts in what your shadows are in your full render. So this is like the raw shadows but this time we get the textures in those areas. I don't have a good texture under here so but if I had a good texture, you'd see my texture here in the shadow areas here. V-Ray Speckler displays Speckler highlights in your image, which I have none in my setup. 
the V-Ray subsurface scattering based the subsurface scattering only. So these two objects and these have subsurface scattering on them. And it can be very useful in comp to dial in some more subsurface V-Ray total lighting. The total lighting in your scene both from direct light and global illumination, but it does not include reflections and refractions. So you get all your lighting and textures, but not your reflections and refractions. V-Ray unclamped color. This shows the unclamped version of your image. The V-Ray velocity pass shows what pixels are moving and how fast they're moving. And this render element can be used in comp to add motion blur. So this sphere is actually moving. And if I went into post, I could use a motion blur plugin to add motion blur to this sphere. V-Ray wire color displays all your objects and you're seeing using the wire, wire color. And it can be useful for generally in lots of math at the same time and then sampling the uh, color in post. So if I just wanted to isolate this beam here, I could just use uh, a node in comp to just isolate the beam and do whatever I want with it. So it's one way of generating maths. V-Ray C depth dip displays the depth information from the camera to a given distance as a gradient from white to black or the inverse. So as you can see here, it starts off as white and the further into the distance it goes, it gets darker and darker. And one way you can use this Pass is to generate depth of field, and there are many plugins that support this in comp. So that's it for the render all the render elements, and let's continue.